What about all, something like ketones? Is there like a lot of, is there like real research behind ketones, like being able to help with uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, some people say even cancer, there's some speculation on like, what's your experience with that and what are your thoughts on that? So the ketogenic diet is interesting with regard to Alzheimer's disease um, because what happens in the brain of somebody with Alzheimer's disease is you see a phenomenon called glucose hypometabolism. So the, the ability of the brain to generate ATP from glucose is diminished by about 50%. And the brain is an energetic like beast. You know, the, the brain makes up two to 3% of your body's mass, mm -hmm. but accounts for 25% of your body's basal metabolic rate. So it's like an, it's energy is incredibly important, right? In fact, they think that that's uh, why we became omnivorous actually is to, it was to supply, be able to supply energy to the ravenous human brain. It's called mm -hmm. the expensive tissue hypothesis. So our, you know, like if you look at gorillas, they have like these vast GI tracts um, but ours became more efficient over time and, uh, and meat helped us get there, right? Because it required less time eating and digesting food because it's coming nutrient. for you, dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They will always, yeah. They'll the, always win. There's nothing mm -hmm. I can say to get no. them off my back because even when I promote the consumption of vegetables, which I do regularly, yeah. right? They still, they don't, it's not like they praise me for that. <laughs> you know, they're just like, I'm damned if I do damned if I don't with vegans. It's, it's wild. Yeah. But, um. But yeah, anyway, so in the brain of somebody with Alzheimer's disease, you see this uh, stark glucose hypometabolism. And um, despite that, the brain's ability to generate energy from ketones, which are a byproduct created via fat metabolism, is unperturbed. So the idea is that for somebody who already has the condition, supplying the brain with ketones can actually effectively keep the lights on, so to speak. Um, in the brain. And we have a number of small trials that have suggested that ketogenic interventions, whether it's with ketogenic supplements, there's actually a ketogenic food product that's been FDA approved to treat dementia. Um, I don't know how, how effective it is, but it's called Axona. It's like an MCT oil-based, um, you know, super purified, standardized food product. Um, or, uh, or ketogenic dietary interventions have been shown to... to improve functional capacity in patients with Alzheimer's disease. And that's a, that's a cohort for which like there really is very little hope in terms of pharmaceutical help because it's like, once you have Alzheimer's disease, I mean, that's a disease process. It's already like decades set into motion. There currently isn't any real pharmaceutical help that people have identified as being really helpful, right? Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, there's, there's a few drugs that, that work to modulate, modulate different neurotransmitters, um, but they're they're not very effective. I mean, my mom was on both of them, and and I don't believe that they helped her um, in any in any significant way. And you know, there was a drug that um, recently made headlines called lecanemab, which which you know might slow progression a little bit, but you know the side effects are are pretty awful. Um, so yeah, so the so the from the dr drug side of things, like. And also Alzheimer's drug trials have a 99.6% fail rate. So it's why, like- Jesus. Why, mm. why wouldn't something like modafinil or something like that work? Well, first of all, there's there's no such thing as a biological free lunch. And, you know, so I would be, I would want to know like, to my knowledge, it hasn't, that hasn't been tested in, in Alzheimer's patients. But, um, but yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know, like, you know, it might provide like a temporary momentary mm. boost, you know, like, why don't they just like, give somebody with dementia like a lot of caffeine but i just think it's like there's there's mm. there's like a you know those kinds of drugs can be like a double-edged sword Power Project fam, this episode is brought to you by Vivo Barefoot Shoes. We've been wearing these shoes for almost a year now. They're flexible. They have a wide toe box. They allow your feet to get connected to the ground, and they will make your feet stronger. And they don't look like shit like a lot of these other barefoot <laughs> shoes. Andrew, how can they get them? For the best barefoot shoes on the planet, and they also look really, really good, <laughs> head over to vivobarefoot.com slash powerproject. At checkout, enter promo code powerproject20 to save 20% off. Again, vivobarefoot.com slash powerproject, promo code powerproject. Our project 20 to save 20% off links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's go ahead and get back to this podcast. Um, do the supplemental ketones, like, do you, have you heard people, uh, cause you've been talking about this topic for a while. Yeah. Uh, you made a documentary, documentaries, a documentary is not available yet or you're getting close. 
It's not out yet. It's called Little Empty Boxes, but people that are that are interested in the film could go to littleemptyboxes.com and see a trailer and uh, sign up to our mailing list for like updates and stuff. So with you talking about this a lot, yeah. has somebody come to you and say, hey, you know, we've tried ketone esters with my mom or my uncle or my grandpa and it's like working great or have you not really heard much of that? You know, it may, it may help. Um, it may help. I don't want to make like strong claims and it's, and it's not a cure, but one person, uh, Mary Newport, has been advocating for the use of ketone-based therapeutics for a while. She, Her husband, um, Steve Newport, had Alzheimer's disease. He passed away some years ago, but um, she she's a physician and she would routinely give him coconut oil mm -hmm. and saw a significant improvement um, over time in his cognition. And, um, and so, yeah, so hypothetically, these kinds of ketone supplements could work uh, to some degree, you know, whether it's like, you know, improving functional capacity for somebody with Alzheimer's disease, um, more research needs to be done. But the thing about ketones, they're not just a fuel source, right? That can potentially keep the engines going for somebody with Alzheimer's disease, but they also act like a, like a signaling mechanism that has been shown to help support blood flow to the brain. Ketones have been shown to boost blood flow to the brain, um, and also improve um, or in increase rather levels of BDNF, which is brain derived neurotrophic factor. So ketones do seem to have all of these different beneficial things that they do for the brain. They change the neurochemistry of the brain. There's no other diet that does that. Like mm -hmm. there's no other, you know, whether it's like the carnivore diet or the, the you know, a plant-based diet, the, a ketogenic diet actually changes the chemistry of the brain in a really significant way. Mm -hmm. And I think for that reason, we have to pay attention to it and we have to continue to study it for conditions like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, et cetera. I mean, it's been, it's been used as a therapeutic diet for certain types of epilepsy for a century at this point. Yeah. So we know that this, this isn't a fad diet, right? Like this is a diet that has like profound implications for the brain. Obviously in the wellness world, people have taken that diet and run with it as like the ultimate weight loss and diet. Trying to make fucking cupcakes out of it and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, settle down. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's, um, so, you know, it, it, that I think in many ways that's, that's kind of hurt actually how serious uh, of a diet this is and like, and the, and the, and the potential benefits of it. Right. And it's also associated now, like you have the vegan, like diet, the vegans coming after it as well, because it tends to be associated mm -hmm. with like meat consumption. And so that can kind of like hurt its, you know, it's a uh, public image, but, um, but yeah, I think it's, it's super important. We need to continue talking about it. Peeps, we love bringing you all this fitness information, and we also want to help bring that information to more people. So if you could help us out, hit that rep subscribe button, and then hit the notification bell, and we'll continue to bring you the heat. And I won't whisper in your ear. <laughs> Talk to you guys later.